Today I'm going to be sharing with you these two ingredient dough pretzels. I don't know if you've tried two ingredient dough, but I have been making so many fun and delicious things in my kitchen with it. I can't believe all the amazing things that you make with it and making things a little bit healthier, a little higher in protein and so good. And you know what? No one is going to ever know. After I made these pretzels, I was like, I need to share them with you. So let me show you how to make this two ingredient dough pretzels and maybe you can bring them to your next Super Bowl party or have it with your afternoon snack. I know you are going to love them. We're starting out with eight cups of flour, but I'm also going to pop in the screen because uh, we're making a big batch, a smaller batch recipe. You're going to also need some Greek yogurt. It needs to be non-fat, nothing added, no sweeteners, just plain yogurt. We're going to be doing four tablespoons of baking powder. Baking powder is what's going to make this into a self-rising flour. If you wanted to, you could just do, if you're making 12 pretzels, two and a two-thirds cup of self-rising flour. We did four tablespoons because we're making a huge batch of pretzels and bagels all at the same time. So my husband's also going to be putting in the whole 48 ounces of yogurt. If you were doing it in a small batch, you would be adding in just two cups of yogurt because my husband is making a big batch because he's making pretzels and uh, bagel at the same time. So we put it into our big KitchenAid mixer and use a dough hook. If you don't have a dough hook, and again, if you're making half this batch or quarter this batch, you could put it into a smaller KitchenAid with a dough hook. You're gonna need to really knead this dough. I did it by hand the first time and I'll say mine was not as good. I didn't know it needed so much kneading. It is using what would be like a self-rising flour, and if you, but we are actually showing you how to make your own self-rising flour because self-rising flour at the store, if you haven't bought it before, is like super expensive. And really all it is is adding in some baking powder and a little salt. We didn't add in salt this time because we are making pretzels and adding our own salt. And I wanna show you this is what your dough is gonna have, like when you push on it, it's gonna push back after you push down into it. Then we're gonna go ahead and knead it out just a little bit more. And now is the important part where we are going to start forming this into kind of a rectangle. Because what we wanna do is try to measure out all of our pretzels, or if you're making pretzels or bagel, whatever you wanna do with your two ingredient dough. And it's two ingredient because really, it's supposed to be just yogurt and self-rising flour, but we're showing you how to make your own self-rising flour so you don't have to buy it because it's, again, so expensive. So you can eyeball it like my husband did. In this case, we were doing 36 pieces and I actually measured and weighed out some of his. His are very even. If you're not like him, then you could go ahead and use a kitchen scale and measure them out to make sure they are exactly even, especially if you're on a diet and you're like, every single gram counts, I want them all even. Or you could just do it like him. I want to let you know that he did say you want to leave it out on the counter for a while. I made these before and mine were not quite as good. So he told me all of the tricks to make them just a little bit better. Starting with leaving them out and letting them rest and making sure that you needed it enough. So you're going to take each piece and you want to make sure that they're all about even and you work it out. And here is one that he's going to show you how to do. And I'm going to show you how to do it. He's going to show us here in just a minute. He was testing it to see how big you want it because you want them all about the same. He said, if you want to do it like they do in the mall or any kind of pretzel place, they actually put out a tape so that they can all be measured exactly the same, which I didn't know. I've never paid attention. So here is exactly how you're going to do it slowly because he does his really fast because obviously if you guys don't know, my husband is a professional chef. So he teaches me all kinds of things at home that I have never learned like making pretzels. Never made a pretzel until this video, until he taught me. So what you have to do is taking them slowly as we, one is to get them all about the same. I thought his little tape trick was fun. And this you're just crossing them over. They usually cross them once or twice and then bring them back, whatever way you want your pretzel. And then at the edges, you wanna make sure you push them down just a little bit. Now, if you're like him, you can do this a lot faster, just like this. I could not do it, I tried it. I have to slowly do it, like one cross and then another cross. So if you're like him, you can just do it. Which, by the way, he does not make pretzels for a living. He actually is an executive chef and hardly ever gets a cook. I think I shared this with you on my chicken pot pies. I have been using a little spray bottle. I'm taking a funnel and just throwing in my egg this way. You could also put an egg for your egg wash into a bowl, just whip it up with a little bit of water. But I find that this is so much easier 
and it makes it so much more even. So then after you put your egg in, you just fill up a few cups with water, give it a good shake. This makes like an even mist for an even browning on things that you might want an egg wash on. So my husband also wanted to tell you that you wanted to make sure that you press in right where the pretzels meet so it doesn't come undone. Now we're gonna get started on of what gives that pretzel its texture on the outside. You're gonna need about six cups of boiling water. You could use a tea kettle, you could just do this on their stove, whatever you have. Then you're gonna also need a fourth of cup of baking soda that we are going to be adding into this boiling water. I put it into a baking dish, but you could do this however you want. You could do it on the stove, in your pot, however you want. So I went ahead and put in my fourth a cup of baking soda, and then I poured in my six cups of boiling water. And believe it or not, all we're gonna do is give these pretzels a little bath. So after you have your water, and you let it cool down just a little, it doesn't need to be boiling, and then you're just gonna put in your pretzels for about, I don't know, 10 seconds or so, 20 seconds, and then probably about 10 seconds. You're just gonna lift them out, and let them drain for just a second. And then you're going to be placing back onto your cookie sheet. And by the way, we just added a silk pad. If not, you could do it with parchment paper or whatever. Silk pad makes it non-stick, so something's non-stick. Then we're gonna add in some coarse ground kosher salts. You could add this in after you baked or before you bake, whatever you would like. If you're gonna reheat them and you wanna add in your salt afterwards, you can do it that way, or you can bake with it on. I think it tastes better with these pretzels to bake with it on with all the salt. Now about halfway through, you're baking them on 350. I would say about 10 minutes in, eight minutes in. These take quite a bit of time to bake. You're gonna go ahead and take your egg wash and evenly spray your pretzels. And you may wanna do this, if they're not browning to your liking, I think I did it about two times. And here's what they look like when they are done. Amazing. Now if you're on a diet like me, I went ahead and used some Tostitos queso. Believe it or not, two tablespoons is only 40 calories. It beats making your own queso when you add in cheese and everything else and heavy cream can be so caloric or if you eat a restaurant, you would not believe what they put in it. But. So this is just a lower calorie version. Here they are, they turn out so good. I hope everybody gives them a try. They are so worth it. I am loving this two ingredient dough. If you'd like more recipes of two ingredient dough, make sure you leave me a comment down in the comments. I love to hear from all of you. And I hope everyone is having a great week and I will see you soon.